Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I'm getting a video up a little earlier than I usually do because I want this to go up before the uh, stream starts in a couple of hours here. I want people to have the opportunity to see this video before the festivities start. Um, obviously, free agency stuff can happen at any time, so it's possible that bullets are already going to start flying between now and the start of the stream. They might have already started this before this video went up, for all I know. I'm recording this, obviously, the night before, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and get this up before my stream started, at least, and given that we made such a big signing last night, I think it's appropriate. I want to talk a little bit more about Draymond Jones and try to understand exactly what we're getting with this new player. So I pulled up a few things from ESPN and PFF to try to explore exactly what Draymond Jones is as a player and what the expectations can be for him going forward and why I thought he was one of the most coveted free agents as a Seahawks fan. So first thing I have on screen here is a pretty simple graphic from ESPN, highest pass rush win rate as a defensive tackle. Now, real quick, before I move on, I want to um, expand on something. Because I got some comments yesterday from on my um, Draymond Jones video. People asking, you listed him as a defensive end, but isn't he a defensive tackle? I thought he was a defensive tackle. It's kind of weird. In a 3-4 defense, in the Vic Fangio defense, which we are probably going to run this year, based off Carroll's comments, Draymond Jones is playing defensive end because he's on the defensive line and he's playing on the end. Now, the way that a 3-4 end plays is kind of more like a 4-3 defensive tackle in many ways. If Draymond Jones was in a 4-3 defense, he would probably be playing 3-tech, if I had to guess. Maybe he could do 5-tech, but I would guess he would be a 3-tech. So yeah, in that defense, he would be a defensive tackle. But in our defense, he'll technically be playing defensive end. Now there's a difference between defensive end and edge rusher, understand that. Draymond Jones is not going to be an edge rusher in this defense. I'm pretty sure of that. He's 280 plus. There's no way. Anyway, that said, um, this kind of sets the stage for what Draymond Jones is. ESPN's pass rush win rate. If you take a look at the list, you can see Draymond Jones comes in at sixth. And really, I mean, Chris Jones is killing it. 21%, 4% higher than anybody else. Then you have three guys tied at 17%. And then you have two guys tied at 16%. So it's all very close together other than Chris Jones. So this gives an idea of the kind of player we're getting here. And you can see it's it's good company. It's a good group to be a part of. Obviously, Chris Jones is on top of the world right now. Hargrave just signed up for all that money. Uh, Dexter Lawrence is a player of a good amount of credibility over in New York. Ioannidis uh, got a... Um, I believe he got a pretty decent amount of money in free agency already. You've got Quinn and Williams, who is a monster over there in New York. Zach Allen got way more money than I expected him to in uh, free agency already. Jonathan Allen's a really good player. So this is kind of the cream of the crop in terms of pass rushing, disruptive playmaking defensive tackles. And Draymond Jones is right in the middle of them. Now, as for a further deep dive into the numbers of Draymond Jones' abilities as a pass rusher, let's hop over to PFF here. So they've done a few different things here. This is every defensive lineman in the league that has that had at least, um, I want to say, like 290 uh, pass rush snaps in 2022, ranked from 1 to 54. So... This is a pretty good way to measure the effectiveness of a lineman as a pass rusher. So, as you can see, Quinnen Williams is number one on this list, and that Greg Gaines is last on this list. Because Greg Gaines is a run stuffer, it kind of makes sense, and Quinnen Williams is a monster, that also makes sense. So, what is this ranking? It's a stat from PFF called Pass Rushing Productivity. Basically, it accrues all of your data as a pass rusher. It looks at how many times are you rushing the passer, how often are you rushing the qu uh, quarterback, and how often are you getting a sack, a QB hit, or a QB hurry. And it's placing extra weight on things like a sack. So a sack is more valuable than a hit or a hurry, which I think that's pretty common sense. Um, you want, you'd rather get the sack than the hit QB hit or the QB hurry. The sack is more definitive 
and it has a more obvious and clear positive impact on your defense. So PRP basically is uh, pressure rate with a weighting towards sacks. Draymond Jones is 11th in the league, tied for 11th with Malik Collins, 6.1. This uh, puts him in pretty good company here. You can see that he's right behind Vita Vey. He's just ahead of Jonathan Allen and Aaron Donald, by the way. And remember, this is an efficiency stat, not a volume stat. So the fact that Aaron Donald missed six games last year doesn't really matter here. A little bit above Deron Payne, Kenny Clark, Grady Jarrett, a little bit below J.J. Watt, DeForest Buckner. So it's pretty good company. By the way, Quentin Jefferson actually very high on this list. He's up here at seven, so ranked sixth. Just something to keep in mind as we move towards through this offseason trying to figure out what to do with these players, just, you know, offering a different perspective there. Now, if you sort by uh, DPR, which is just the total number of quarterback pressures a player generated, basically sacks plus hits plus hurries, you can see that Draymond Jones is still actually tied for 11th here. One thing that I would note is that he did it in 13 games. Every other player in the top 15 or actually, you could say top um, 19, with the exception of Aaron Donald, played in at least 15 games. Seven, see, what I'm saying is 16, 16, 17, 17, 17, 17. Everybody in the top 20, except for Draymond Jones, Aaron Donald, and Matt Ioannidis, played at least 15 games. Draymond Jones was one of the guys who played 13 so his 45 is actually a little more impressive. If he had played in all 17 games, this 45 probably would have been somewhere around 55, maybe 58, and that would have put him right near the top five. Now, that being said, being able to play a full season is a skill, and Draymond Jones has battled minor injury issues throughout his career. It has cost him games. I think he has one season out of four where he's been a... Uh, full season player, although I would say that it's going to become more and more rare that players play all 17 games in a season as we continue to move through the uh, new NFL schedule. I think you're going to see more players end up playing like 15 games a year just because they need to save themselves, but um, Draymond Jones does need to not have that little nagging injury befall him this year and be able to play at least those 15 games instead of 13. So that's fair, but given the fact that he only played in 13 games, this is actually a really impressive total. 45 total QB pressures. Now, again, this is PFF. They're much more friendly with their pressure numbers than a site like PFR. But regardless, um, you can also kind of use this to gauge their um, pressure rate because you can take a look at the number of total pass rush uh, snaps they got over here. And then you just uh, divide uh, divide by the uh, number of uh, defensive uh, pass rushes they created. Or actually, it would be the other way around. You divide the number of times they got a pressure by the number of times they were allowed to pass rush. You can see that Draymond Jones's uh, pressure rate is just over 10%. I think it's like 10.5%. And that's not as good as guys like Chris Jones. It's not as good as Dexter Lawrence. It's not as good as Cameron Hayward. But... It's going to be up there fairly high, pretty close to the top 10 as far as defensive linemen go. So, long story short, Draymond Jones is not the best interior pass rusher in the league, but he is a very good one. Now, let's explore why his run defense grade is so bad. Because this is the thing that is holding him back from being considered a really good player. In fact, PFF doesn't like him very much, as a few people pointed out last night. PFF actually thinks he's kind of bad. And that's because his run defense grade is bad. Now, real quick, let me offer up this. The Denver Broncos, since Draymond Jones got into the NFL, last year, worst offense in the league, 32nd. Year before, 23rd. So just barely out of the bottom quarter. Year before that, 28th. So bottom five. Year before that, 28th, bottom five. So Draymond Jones has never had a good offense. And that's going to mean you're on the field more, you're under more stress, you're under more pressure to perform because you can't count on your offense to bail you out pretty much ever, and that's going to make it harder for you to play well from snap to snap to snap. Um, I think that this kind of thing is going to show up in your run defense because teams are going to be more 
motivated to run the ball against you, and it's just harder to hold up from snap to snap to snap when you know your offense can't support you and your offense isn't supporting you. So I think that does come into play as well. However, if you take a look at PFF's uh, run defense grades, there are a few things I want to point out here. This is a defensive lineman again. Stop percentage. This is basically the percentage of running plays that the opposing offense runs where the player in question made the stop, made the tackle, contributed to the end of the play. Um, I believe this is uh, everybody who played at least 194 uh, excuse me, it would, no, it would actually be, no, 194 run defense snaps last year. You can see guys like Christian Wilkins uh, way up at the top, 13%, Aaron Donald. Um, a lot of these guys are more smaller names. They're more the nose tackle types, uh, Broderick Washington Jr., Zach Sealer, but you have big names as well. Um, where um, uh, Jones falls here is right in the middle. Draymond Jones is 35th with a stop rate of 7.2%, which is basically in the middle because you scroll the way down here, you can see that the bottom entry is 76th. So in this area, he's just doing okay. The real problem, I think, with a guy like a um, Jones in terms of his run defense comes in his average depth of tackle. This basically marks... How many yards did the opposing team gain on average on plays where you made the stop on a run play? And as you can see, we actually had one player who had negative yards, Kurt Heinisch of uh, Houston, which is really good because he was on the field for a decent chunk of runs, although his stop percentage was only 4%, so, you know, take it for what it is. Um, yeah, Deron Payne doesn't do good here. I'm... Freudian slip, my bad guys, Draymond Jones. Draymond Jones does not do very well here at all. His average depth of tackle is 56th, pretty close to the bottom of the league here, three yards flat. So that is kind of the problem that Draymond Jones has right now. When he gets the stop on a run play, it's further down the field. Um, you can see that like the very bottom of the league, guys like Shy Tuttle are giving up just under four yards a carry. Puna Ford was right near the bottom, which is why he was graded out so badly. Quentin Jefferson as well. You know, kind of a recur you know, maybe this is starting to make sense, right? This is why we had such a bad run defense last year. Average depth of tackle for defensive linemen was bad. You want your defensive linemen to be making plays behind or close to the line of scrimmage. And you can see that some of these guys did do that. J.J. Watt made his plays against the run right near the line of scrimmage. Malik Collins, right near the line of scrimmage. Jonathan Allen, Jeffrey Simmons, Zach Allen, they were making plays within a yard to a yard and a half of the line of scrimmage. And you come, you scroll all the way down here, you look at Draymond Jones, you've got three yards. And by the way, while we're here, he actually accrued seven penalties against him last year, which was very close to the league lead. I think the only one who had more was uh, J.J. Watt. So that's also something to work on as well. The good news is he is one of the younger guys that you're going to see on this list. There are a few guys who are probably about the same age, but he's only 26. He can get better. He can change the way that he plays in ways that I wouldn't expect an older player to do. Like, for instance, a guy like a Hargrave, who has been in the league a while now and has found tremendous success doing what he is currently doing and has been doing it for a long time. So, the at the end of the day here, I think that you see what kind of player that Draymond Jones is pretty clearly here. He's one of the best, but not the elite of the interior pass rushers. But he is a little bit weak in the run defense, I think. I think that is probably pretty fair to say. Um, mostly, it just comes from an issue of him making his plays too deep down the field. Zach Allen, a defensive lineman that I would have loved to acquire, that ended up going for more than I thought. Maybe this is why. When he makes his plays against the run, he doesn't make a ton of them. I Admittedly, right, he only made about one a game. But those plays are being made within a yard and a half of the line of scrimmage. So, let me know what you guys think about all this. How are you feeling about this big, big signing, big, big news coming out of Seahawks camp yesterday? That's uh, my quick and dirty evaluation of what he is in general as a player for those of you who were wondering what we can expect. See you guys in streaming a little bit here. Go Hawks.